I wouldn't even know how to put it in my calculator. I don't even understand the question. This reminds me of the time I had an argument with my ex. These were all responses to question 16c on the Mathematics Extension 2 HSC exam of 2023. Many called it extremely difficult, while news headlines called it borderline sadistic. So what is it that makes this question so unbelievably hard? Part of the question's difficulty comes from the fact that it uses complex numbers, combining extensive theory with critical thinking. Here's how the question goes. The complex numbers W and Z both have a modulus of 1, and the argument of their division is in between pi divided by 2 and pi. For real numbers x and y, consider the complex number xz plus yw divided by z. On an xy plane, clearly sketch the region that contains all points xy, for which its argument is between pi divided by 2 and pi. We're essentially taking two complex numbers, z and w, both of which are located somewhere on the unit circle. This statement here means that the angle difference between z and w is obtuse. Just for a visual representation, let's plot two points on the unit circle and obtuse angle apart. Think of these two points as vectors, displaced up by its imaginary units and across by its real units. Alright, let's pause and take all of that in. Z and W are a distance of 1 away from the origin. They have an angle difference that is obtuse. And both of these points can be thought of as vectors. Alright, let's move on to the next section. We're trying to find the values for X and Y in which the argument of XZ plus YW divided by Z is in between pi divided by 2 and pi. If we deconstruct this expression, we can reinterpret this intimidating equation. We can use argument identities to rewrite this expression as a subtraction. This over here is a solid linear combination, while this means we rotate by z's angle clockwise. To have this argument be in between pi divided by 2 and pi, we need xz plus yw to be in this section rotated z's angle clockwise. Here we are, xz plus yw must land somewhere in this section. Keep in mind that we don't actually know what z or w is, and that we're simply using this as a visual example. Remember how earlier I told you to think of z and w as vectors? This is where that becomes useful. We can think of z and w as adjustable values tied to coefficients x and y. Using changes in x and y, we can literally have every point expressed in terms of z and w. We're trying to find values of x and y so that the point of xz plus yw falls into this area. It becomes evident that no matter the values of z and w, this section is always on the side opposite to z. This means that in order to get to this section, we need a negative value of x. It's also clear that in order to get there in terms of w, y must be negative too. We now know that both x and y are less than zero. Alright, now we're really getting somewhere. Let's think of x and y as adjustable values tied to a vector, rather than real numbers. To signify this leap, we can write xz and yw as a and b. Let's say we need to travel xz or a. We know it has to be in this direction, as x has to be negative. Then we need to travel some amount b in this direction. Once again, we know it has to be in this direction, as y is also negative. This angle here is equal to 180 degrees, or pi, minus the argument of z divided by w, and through alternate angles, this angle is also equal to pi minus the argument of z divided by w. Now, doesn't this seem familiar? A right angle triangle, an angle, two sides? That screams trigonometry, doesn't it? Let's take the cosine of this angle, 
We know that it equals the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, or a divided by b. We're getting really close. We already have a clear relationship between a and b. All we need is to simplify the equation. Using cosine rules, we can remove the pi and make it negative. Let's multiply both sides by b. Finally, we have no use for a and b anymore, so we can just substitute x and y. Divide both sides by the cosine statement and multiply both sides by negative 1. Alright, we're finally here at the end of the question. All we need is one last observation. It was given that this argument was in between pi divided by 2 and pi, so this means that its cosine is in between 0 and negative 1. We're finally left with a simple linear graph whose gradient is in between 0 and 1. On the xy plane, we're going to graph x equals y in the third quadrant, as both x and y are negative. And this entire area is the possible points in which x and y lands. Alright, that was a long question. If you're still here, then congratulations on solving it. There exists more than one method of getting to the answer though, so if you want to explore this further, I'd highly recommend other videos which I'll leave in the description. Alright, that's enough, bye.